Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we're going to be discussing how the EQ Marja principle helps us decide the optimum bundle of goods and we're going to be continuing from a previous video and this is the same example that I had also done in my previous video as well but we did not um, see that worked example in the previous video but we're going to be seeing it in this video. So if you're on this video and you haven't seen the previous video, I would suggest that you first go and see, check out the previous video and then come on to this video. Anyways, let's move forward but before that let me give you a smaller example and I'm going to be saying for instance, let's say that I've drawn a table where I've written that the marginal utility from good A is let's say 40 utils while that from good B is 30 utils, right? So if I just look at this value, if I just look at the marginal utility and as a consumer I need to see that you know whether I should buy good A or whether I should buy good B and I be like if I was, uh, if I'm just a normal consumer then I will be like oh you know what I should buy good A because it's giving me a higher utility of 40 utils instead of good B which is giving me only 30 utils, right? So I should then go for 40, uh, I should go for good A because that's giving 40 utils instead of B that's giving me 30 utils. But this is not the right decision. The, the simple reason is that the prices are different and we usually have goods that have different prices. So here the equi margin principle kicks in and that is why the equi margin principle helps a rational consumer decide. Now what is the equi margin principle telling us? The equi margin principle will tell us you know what hang on if you want to make a decision then do this thing that look at the margin utility per dollar. Just don't look at the margin utility divide the margin utility by price and look at the margin utility per dollar that is what the equi margin principle tells us that is you know it tells us that you know look at the margin utility per dollar now if i look at the margin utility per dollar i divide the margin utility by price i get eight utils a dollar and i get 10 utils a dollar now the situation has been completely reversed because now what 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 we can see here is that you know if i buy good a i get a margin from if i buy if if basically i pay one dollar if i want to pay one dollar for buying either good A or good B, then I'll be like, oh, I have $1, then I should now buy, instead of buying A, I should go for B because that is giving me a higher utility per dollar spent, right? You need to understand that this was the utility of 40 utils was, I was gaining 40 utils by paying $5 because this was the marginal cost, this was the marginal benefit, right? Well, I was gaining 30 utils, although I was gaining yes, less utility of 30 utils as compared to 40, but then that was because, because, because if I compare it against the price, that was when I was paying $3 for it, right? That, and, you know, that is why, guys, the, the, the concept of marginal in economics holds so much importance, so much importance. And that is why economics actually teaches us that, you know, we should look at the marginal values. And if you're looking at the marginal values, and if you're comparing the marginal cost with the marginal benefit, then if you're comparing the marginal cost to the marginal benefit for two goods, then remember that we have to keep the marginal cost the same. It, it can't be that we say that marginal benefit from good A is higher as compared to the marginal benefit from good B, but then, but then they also have different marginal costs involved. Then we need to keep the marginal cost the same. And that is why we divide marginal utility by, by the price, because that helps us compare the marginal benefit gained per dollar spent. Right. So we have so for good A also we are taking a dollar for good B also we are taking a dollar. So the marginal cost now becomes the same. The marginal cost in this case becomes one dollar. And since it becomes one dollar now it helps us compare the marginal utility or the benefit game gained against one dollar. That is a that is a that is a more a proper comparison. And who taught us this comparison? The concept of marginal economics taught us this comparison. So the so that is why the concept of marginal is important in economics. So now if I look at this scenario, if I look at the marginal utility a dollar, it, it's simply telling us that uh, I should actually go for good B because that is giving me a higher marginal utility per dollar. And that because now, and so, so as a rational consumer, if I had to spend one dollars now, I should have, an, I, I, I should actually spend, you know, I should actually spend, um, so for the first unit of good that I buy, and if I wanted to spend a dollar, I should actually spend one dollar on buying good B instead of uh, spending a dollar on buying good A, right? And that is why we are actually taking marginal utility per dollar spent. That gives us a more rational or a more realistic comparison between good A and good B. Understood, guys? So now, <clears throat> so, so having said that, let's move on to our example now. Okay, guys, we're back to our example. And this example is telling us that we have an income or a budget constraint of $16, which means that a consumer has $16 in his pocket and he is... Let's say a consumer leaves his house from 16 and he has $16 in his pocket. He's like he needs to buy grocery for himself and he has $16, right? And he has decided and he has left his house thinking that he needs to buy two goods, that is good A and good B. 
now mentally he does not knows he has not decided yet which quantity of good a should he buy and which quantity of good b should he buy he has left his house thinking to the superstore that i have to buy good a and good b i have 16 dollars in my pocket now i don't know how much quantity of a should i buy how much quantity of b should i buy obviously consumers need a basis and that is where economics kicks in and tells the consu- and that is where the eq major principle teaches that basis to the consumer this is how you will actually um buy an optimum bundle that will maximize your total utility and this is such a great concept if you just don't road learn the formula understand the basis and the concept and if you will understand the basis and the concept behind it you will write a better answer in your p4 essay question and that is where you will impress the examiner that this is you know i know how to i know my work basically so guys having said that that we have an income constraint of 16 dollars and i have left the supermarket i need to buy two goods a and b right and uh, the marginal utility per dollar is given for good a 30 20 10 8 4 and then 15 10 8 4 2 1 1 so we have already calculated that that in our previous um, um video as well so i have 16 dollars now i need to now so uh, so i go to the superstore i have a row where there is good a another row right next to there is good b so now what i'll do is that i have 16 dollars and let's say i need to spend 16 dollars for it good a cost me 4 dollars a unit good b cost me 2 dollars a unit simple right so now let's say that if i basically um i sort of i i i what i do is that i need to buy the first unit now which means that i am considering whether the first unit that i buy should i buy good a or should i buy good b so the marginal utility principle is simply telling us that compare the marginal utility of dollars with the marginal utility per dollar of good b and the marginal utility per dollar of good a is 30 for the first unit of good a and the for the first unit of good b the marginal utility per dollar is 15 here which means that obviously 30 is more than 15 so what i will do i will simply buy good a here so the first unit that i have bought i will go for good a which means that i have actually bought good a the first unit has been bought which is i have bought good a when i have bought good a which means that i have spent 4 dollars on it so 4 dollars have already been spent and now if i deduct 4 from 16 i am only left with 12 dollars now i have to allocate 12 dollars in a way that i am maximizing my total utility now comes the decision to buy the second good whether i should buy good a now or whether i should buy good b now now if i buy good a it will be the second unit of good a or um uh, and if i buy good b instead that would be the first unit of good b obviously but if i compare the second unit of good a with the first unit of good b the marginal utility still of good a is more than the marginal utility of good b for the first unit as compared to uh, as in marginal utility per dollar so i should then go for good a because that's giving me a marginal utility a dollar of 20 as compared to a marginal utility a dollar of 15 right so then again i buy good a and again i spend 4 dollars now i have total i have spent 8 dollars and i am only left with 8 dollars that is 16 minus 8 8 dollars now comes the decision whether to buy the third unit should i go for good a or should i go for good b now if i go for good a again that would be the third unit of good a as compared to the first unit of good b why the first unit because i haven't really bought good a right so i can't compare 10 with 8 why because i haven't bought good a right e- yet sorry my bad i haven't bought good b yet so which means that i if i have to buy the third unit it could be either good a or it could be the first unit of good b so guys if i look at the table then the first unit of good b is giving me a marginal utility per dollar of 15 as compared to the marginal utility per dollar of the third unit of good a which is 10 then obviously what what do you suggest me because obviously now i will go for good b because that's giving me a higher marginal utility of 15 do- 15 uh, utils a dollar as compared to a marginal utility per dollar of 10 here right so i go for um, the first unit of good b and i buy good b as my third unit and which means that i have spent 2 dollars for it so now in total i have spent 10 dollars and i am only left with uh 6 dollars because 16 dollars was my budget now i have to allocate 6 now i have to allocate the remaining 6 dollars in buying good a or good b now comes the fourth unit now here is where it gets interesting and here is where is here is where the eq marginal principle becomes more realistic right and here is where you'll actually understand why when we say that the marginal that the consumer will optimize his purchases where the marginal utility for good a divided by the price of good a equals the marginal utility of good b over the price of good b so a lot of students don't just learn this formula they don't even understand the logics behind it but anyways moving forward what it actually means is what we are trying to say over here is guys as far as the fourth unit is concerned i could either buy um i could so so, so the fourth unit could either be would either be the third unit of good a 
or it would be the second unit of good B because I have bought two units of good A so now I could I will obviously buy the third unit of good A on this or the second unit of good B. Now third unit of good A is giving me a marginal utility per dollar of 10 utils a dollar and the second unit of good B is giving me a marginal utility of 10 utils a dollar as well. So now you see I've reached a point where I'm actually indifferent. I'm neutral, right? I it's it's now it's up to me whether to buy the third unit of good A in or the second unit of good B instead. Now it's up to me. I could either buy A or I could buy B. Now it's up to me. It's my choice now. So let's say at that point I decide that I'm going to go with the the first the the third unit of good A. Now I could also have gone for the second unit of good B, but it's just my choice, right? It just it's it's my choice so i go for the third unit of good a that gives me a marginal utility per dollar of 10 euros a dollar and which means that i've spent four dollars on it in total now i've spent uh, four four two and four so that's uh, 14 dollars and now i am only left with 16 minus 14 that is i'm only left with two dollars now so if i'm only left with two dollars which obviously now means that i can only go for good b because um that's only for two dollars i can't buy good a but that's but let's leave that assumption for now i mean that's that's not an assumption that's reality but let's leave that argument for now and let's look at the figures now what i will do is that i i now have the option i've basically bought three units of good a so i've bought this this and this right and i've also bought a unit of good b as well so now i now i have to buy the fifth unit and the fifth unit could would either be the fourth unit of good A or it could be the second unit of good B, right? Um, but technically I'm only left with $2, but then again, but the point where I'm trying to say is obviously I will not go for the fourth unit of good A because that is giving me a less marginal utility per dollar as compared to the second unit of good B, which is giving me a higher marginal utility per dollar. And and so, so the fact, so the point that I'm trying to make over here is that I'm going to go for the second unit of good B now because uh, that's that has a higher marginal utility per dollar. So I go for the second unit of good B that gives me a marginal utility per dollar of dollar ten. So I go for good B now, and now I have exhausted all my sixteen dollars. So, but the point, the main point, what I'm trying to make over here is that how does the equity margin principle kicks in? That if you if you if you look at the equity margin principle, the, what is the equity margin principle teaching us? The equity margin principle is teaching us that you know what you should a consumer should buy, consumer should buy those uh, units of goods where the MU per dollar of that good is greater than the MU per dollar of the other good simply and if we look at our example basically our uh, the MU per dollar of A was greater than the MU per dollar of B and that is why the consumer started buying um, good A first because the MU per dollar of good A was higher than the MU per dollar of good B and as far as far as the second unit is concerned still the MU per dollar of good A was higher than the MU per dollar of good B, right? So, so basically, so basically, but then as the consumer goes on buying the 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 good A, the the law of diminishing marginal utility kicks in, and the marginal utility per dollar still you know also keeps on declining. So from thirty it moves to twenty and then ten. But then what I'm trying to say is that as the consumer keeps on buying good A, the marginal utility per dollar for good A keeps on declining. And then the consumer would reach a point where he would now be indifferent between um, either buying good A and good B. And that is the point where the consumer has actually optimized his purchases because now he has reached a point where if he buys good A, he gets a marginal utility of, uh, of, of uh, 10 uh, utils a dollar per dollar. And if he buys good B as well, he gets a marginal utility of 10 utils a dollar. So, and which was, you know, the third unit of good A and the second unit of good B, which means that the consumer should keep, should initially buy uh, good A because that is giving him a higher marginal utility per dollar than good B. But then what happens is that the marginal utility of per dollar of good A basically starts declining. It keeps on falling. 
and then so it so so you, and then it keeps on falling and when it keeps on falling then the consumer starts buying good b because when he was about to buy the third unit of the good he had to decide whether he should go for good a or he should go for good b so he went for good b now because why because now since the marginal utility for good a had started falling so since the marginal utility for good a had started falling so now the marginal utility for good b was higher then the marginal utility of good A for the third unit since 15 was more than 10. So since the margin, diminishing marginal utility for good A kicks in since he starts buying good A. So the diminishing marginal utility for good A kicks in and then the marginal utility per dollar for good A starts falling. And then a point reaches when he was about to make the third purchases. He had to go for good B, right? Because the marginal utility per dollar for good B was higher than the marginal utility per dollar for good A. And that is what the equal mar this is the equal marginal principle. This is what the marginal principle is basically. And then the marginal principle converts itself into the equal marginal principle telling us that as far as the marginal principle is concerned, you go on buying the units between good A and B good B, you substitute A for B, B for A. And then a point comes uh, where, you know, you will reach a point where you'll be like, should I now go for good A or should I go for good B? And then a point will come where the margin utility, you, 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 you'll be like, oh, you know, if I, if I, now if I buy good A, I'm getting $10. And now if I buy good B, I'm also getting $10 for it. So now you'll be like kind of indifferent between these two. And when that happens, that's the point where you, you know, you either go for good A or good B. And then, you know, now, now ultimately your income will be exhausted. And now the marginal utility per dollar for both the goods are now equal. And when that has happened, you have actually maximized your total utility now. Why have you maximized total utility, guys? This is important to know because this is what you need to write in the exam. You have maximized your total utility because you use the margin analysis here. You bought those num those goods first that had or that yielded you higher marginal utility per dollar. Since you bought good A first, then again you bought good A next, and then you did not go for good. A as far as the third uh, option was concerned. You went for good B then because that was giving you a greater marginal utility per dollar. And then as far as the fourth one was concerned, since the fourth was giving you 10 as, as well as the second of B was also giving you 10. So you it, it, now you are indifferent, right? And when that happens, when the point comes where now you are indifferent and neutral between the purchase of good A and good B, it means that your previous selection was right. It means that this selection was done in the right manner. Because this selection was done in the right manner, you ultimately reach a point where you uh, are, have become indifferent between these two, A and B. So you go for A and then you go for B and then, you know, but they both are giving you the same, same marginal utility per dollar. So remember that this formula, a lot of students don't even know why we have reached this formula. You have reached this formula initially because they both were not equal initially. Initially, what, what was the situation was that the marginal utility of A over the price of A, which is the marginal utility per dollar, was greater than the marginal utility of B over the price of B. And this was until for the first two units. For the first two units, for the first two units of A, this was the case. As far as the third unit was concerned, third unit, the marginal utility of B uh, per dollar was more than the marginal utility of A per dollar, right? So he bought the third unit, he bought good B. Why? Because the marginal utility per dollar of B was more than the marginal utility of A per dollar. So instead of buying good A now, he bought good B. So he, and then this, he kept on substituting this way. He started, he first was buying A, then diminishing marginal utility per dollar for good A happened. So he bought good B instead as far as the third unit was concerned. And then, and then, and then basically, um, he became indifferent because the marginal utility for A per dollar now became now equal the marginal utility of B per dollar. And when this happened, it means that now the consumer could either go for A or B because they both are yielding him the same marginal utilities. So what he did was that he went for A. He could have also gone for B. And when he went for A, obviously he now had, he was now left with $2. So he spent the remaining $2 on B. If he would have gone for B instead, he would have been left with $4, so he would have gone for A instead over here. But whether he goes for A or he goes for B or whether A or B, the same, they both are yielding him the same marginal utility per dollar.
So basically what we're trying to say is that when we reach a situation where the margin utility of per dollar for A equals the margin utility per dollar for B, what we actually mean by this situation is that whatever will be his next purchase, whatever will be now his next purchase, you know, whatever the next unit he will purchase, he could either go for A as well or B as well, you know, but then they both will yield him a same marginal utility per dollar. Right, so a situation has come where the marginal utilities per dollar for A is now exactly equal to the marginal utility per dollar for B. So whatever his next purchase would be, whether he would go for A or whether he could go for B, they both will yield him the same marginal utility per dollar. So that is that the marginal utilities utility per dollar has actually uh, been equalized now. They are both equal now. So it means that now he should then go for A and then he should go for B because both are yielding him the same utility and then, you know, he'll exhaust his incomes accordingly. But then when this happens, it means that the first, the, the, the previous units have been bought in the optimum manner and then the last two units that he bought, that the fourth and fifth, have been bought a, um, in a manner or accordingly when they, you know, the marginal utilities per dollar actually became equal, which means that, you know, the fourth and the fifth unit were also um, optimally bought. And then, which, you know, which, which hence we can conclude that uh, he, when he reaches this point, now um, he reaches this point because the point is that why did he reach, the, you know, he, why did he reach this point? Why did they ultimately become equal? They ultimately became equal because initially he made the right decision of actually going for buying A because the marginal utility per dollar for A was greater than the marginal utility per dollar for B. Which and because this was greater, then he bought this and then and then ultimately diminishing utility came in and then you know um, this became higher. Marginal utility per dollar for B became higher. So he started buying marginal utility for he started buying B then. And then ultimately they became equal. So this is how this process of Yuki Maja principle works. And when they became equal, then he should um, he becomes indifferent or neutral between these two. And then he uh, he buys either A or B, and then he exhausts his income accordingly. And then that's the optimum bundle. And when this situation reaches the consumer that he becomes neutral and indifferent, it means that the first three units were made in the right manner. And the first three units are made in the right manner, so obviously now it becomes, it makes it more convenient to buy A here and then B here or B here or A here. But then again, if you look at this, if, if, if the entire consumption is made according to this intention that the mar that you should go where the marginal utility a dollar is more than the marginal utility a dollar for the other good, then ultimately a point will come where they both will be equal. And that is a point where the consumer has optimized his purchases of the bundle and then allocative efficiency has been achieved. Now I'll also prove this by the way. You guys remember that in the previous example we I gave you the possible combinations but so so for instance let's say that if this is the optimum combination so how many units of good A has he bought? He's bought one unit of A here, here and then here. So he has basically bought 3A and he's bought 2B. Right, he's bought two B and three A. So that is the optimum combination. So if I if I look at these possible combinations that we have derived in the previous video as well, the optimum combination is three A and two B. Now, if I were to ask you that he spent sixteen dollars on buying three A and two B, he could have also gone for one A and six B. That would have also exhausted sixteen dollars. But then that was not the rational purchase. And I'll prove you why it wasn't the rational purchase as well in this video as well. so. If I were to ask you to calculate the total utility that he has gained from 3A and 2B, how will you calculate the total utility? You'll be like, okay, fine. So he's bought three units of A. So now let's see how much utility did he gain by buying three units of A, right? So the first unit of A gave him a utility of 120. Now here you will not take this value 30. Why? Because the, the simple reason is that this is margin utility per dollar, right? But if you buy the first, if you buy the first unit of A, so you spend $4. So 30 times 4 gives you a marginal utility of 120. If you buy the second unit of A, you spend $4 again. So 20 times 4 gives you 80. So, so basically, if you buy the first unit of A, how much utility you get? You get 120 um, utils of utility. So, so, if, so the first unit yields him 120. The second unit of A yielded him 80. And the third unit yielded him 40. So 120 plus 80 plus 40, right? Plus, how many units of good B? The first yielded him 30 unit, 30 utils, and then the second yielded him 20 utils, right? So 120 plus 80 plus 40 plus 30 and 20. 
plus 30 plus 20. So if you see, if you sum them up, basically, you get a total utility of so if you sum them up, you get a total utility of, uh, let, let me just add it, 120 plus 80 plus 40 plus 30 and 20. So you get a total utility of 290, right? You get a total utility of 290. Now I want you to pause this video and I want you to, um, you know, calculate the total utility for these, right? And then I want you to compare it with the utility gained over here. And then you'll see for yourself that the total utility gained in the third combination was the highest. And that is where allocative efficiency has been reached and the consumer has maximized. Now I want you to pause this video and do that calculation. Okay guys, so I've done the calculation for you as well and you can see for yourself that the highest utility from these four possible combinations has been achieved in combination C. We are getting a total utility of 290 utils, right? We're getting a total utility of 290 utils and as far as option A was concerned, it's 200, 274 and 274. So basically, out of all the four possible combinations, the highest utility the consumer gets is 290, right? And the simple reason why did this happen was because he simply bought 3A and 2B. That was the simple reason. If he would have, so if the consumer would have acted irrationally, remember, again, you need to tell the examiner that if the consumer would have acted irrationally, he might have, you know, just ended up buying the wrong units. Maybe he would have, he would have been stup acted stupid and he would have just bought 4A, four units of good A, right? And my he might and why why would he, he bought he would have been bought buying four units of good A because maybe he would be comparing these marginal utilities of A with the marginal utilities of B and he would be like oh you know what let's compare 120 with 30 and then 80 and then 40 and then 32 with the marginal utilities of good B so obviously the marginal utilities of good A were higher than the marginal utilities of good B right so instead of calculating the marginal utility per dollar he would have just looked at the marginal utility in itself. And that would have been the wrong basis of the decision, like I told you in the in at the start of the video as well. And that is where the concept of marginal is very important. And that is what the marginal principle is teaching the consumer that hang on, don't just look at the marginal utility, look at the marginal utility per dollar spent. So in option A, B, and C, in all these three options, the consumer is acting irrationally. Similarly, the consumer is acting irrationally in option two as well, uh, in option B, because he's buying two units of good A while he is buying four units of good B. That is also, and although he is exhausting $16 of his income, but then he hasn't maximized his total utility. He hasn't maximized his total welfare. Neither, so the reason is for not maximizing his, and if, if, he, if he hasn't maximized his total utility and total welfare, he's also not maximized his consumer surplus. So you've given that information to the examiner. That irrational decision making would mean that he's not maximizing total utility, neither maximizing his total welfare, total consumer surplus. So that is why making the right decision is important and knowing the concept of marginal is important. As far as the first unit is concerned, also he's bought one unit of A and then six units of B. Now that's also an irrational decision because he did not, the consumer did not follow the concept of marginal analysis, right? He did not know that he should compare the marginal utility per dollar of one good with the marginal utility per dollar of the other good. And then he should buy the number of goods according. He just went on purchasing it maybe because of on its own, I don't know, it could be any reason right? It could be any reason. But then again, the marginal principle is, or the utility analysis is telling us, that look at the marginal utility per dollar and then compare it and then go for it accordingly. And that would help you make the right decision. And when the point comes when the, both the marginal utilities per dollar are equal, then you become indifferent in between these two goods. And then you could either go for one good or the other good irrespectively. And then ultimately you will exhaust that income because the next because you buy good A and then again the next unit you buy would be the other good obviously because they both yield the same marginal utility per dollar and in this way you will actually uh, have exhausted your total incomes of $16 but then the outcome of that would be that you would have bought that number of good A and good B that will maximize your welfare and your utility. So the consumer is getting a total utility of, of basically 290 utils. That is the answer, right? And this will also, this, this kind of worked example will also help you understand this, this equation and also help you, and also really definitely be helping you in your MCQs as well. So guys, remember that the concept of EQ Marginal Principle is simply telling us that you go for those goods where the marginal utility per dollar exceeds the marginal utility per dollar of the other good, right? So which means that you go for this good. And when you go for this good, this is the step one. And you, when you go for this good, the law of diminishing marginal utility kicks in. So the marginal utility 
per dollar for A would start going down and then if it's going down then obviously it will be it will it will keep on going down but when it's 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 lower than the marginal utility per dollar of good B then you start buying good B instead right and obviously then if you start buying good B instead so the marginal utility per dollar of good B would also go down but then when you keep on this substitution it there will come a point where the marginal utility per dollar of A would exactly equal the marginal utility per dollar of B because you'll see that a point will come where you'll be like indifferent between either purchasing A or B as your next purchase and when that comes when that happens then obviously you have made the previous purchase in the right manner and then you should either go for A or B and then if you go for A then if you have if you're left with the remaining income then you go for B right and that is how you maximize and optimize your bundle and this is you need to it now in the exam on a question of consumer equilibrium you're not supposed to give the entire table you can just give one or two figures and then you know explain a bit but you will remember the guys that you will only be able to explain it in the correct manner to the examiner your words would be clear but if you know the concept in and out the reason for doing for doing this example was to explain you in detail how this actually how this concept actually works so when i'm checking the exams a lot of students they just end up saying that the equity market principle says that they both are equal and they don't really understand what it means so you if you understand what you mean only then you will be able to explain it properly and clearly to the examiner in the correct words right so this is what the equity market principle is and we have now seen that you know um, the to amount of total utility so part d how much total utility i get from the optimum combination the total utility i get from the optimum combination is 290 utils if you have 16 dollars what is the co what combination will maximize total utility the answer is that I should go for buying three units of good A and two units of good B. So this is it guys. I'll I hope you understood this video and enjoyed it as well. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then take care.